Good morning, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on lasers. Introduction Laser is an acronym for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. In surgery, lasers are able to cut tissue with precision and achieve almost perfect hemostasis. Lasers have various applications in thoracic surgery, such as excision of central airway tumors, such as bronchial carcinoma, ENT surgery, such as excision of vocal cord tumors, gynecology, such as excision of endometriosis, urology, such as treating BPH, dermatology, such as removal of skin lesions, and eye surgery, such as correction of myopia. Mechanism of Action of Lasers Lasers produce an intense parallel beam of coherent monochromatic light. With high energy intensity and small cross-sectional area by stimulated emission of photons from excited atoms. Light is a form of radiant energy that spans the mid-range of the electromagnetic spectrum. It is released as photons and travels as a wave. The lasing medium describes the type of laser. It may be a gas such as carbon dioxide, argon or helium. It may be a solid such as neodymium yttrium aluminium garnet, NDYAG, or a liquid, such as dye lasers using rhodamine 6G. The priming stage. Electrons of atoms in a lasing medium resides in a stable and low energy level before priming, also known as the ground state. Pulsed energy is transmitted from an energy source to the lasing medium. The energy source may be an intense light or electrical discharge. Electrons are raised to a higher energy state around their host atoms. The energy pulse is then switched off. Some excited electrons return to their lower energy state and in doing so, they give off photons that travel in random directions within the lasing medium. Lasing mediums can comprise of multiple energy levels. Decay occurs when electrons release excess energy and return to lower energy levels as higher energy states are unstable in comparison to the ground state. Stimulated emission occurs when a photon collides with an electron that has been primed and is in a high energy state. It forces the electron to return to a lower energy state. A quantum of energy in the form of a photon is then released. This second photon has several features that are the same as the first photon. It has the same wavelength, direction of travel, and phase relationship. The container for the lasing medium has mirrors at both ends. Only photons traveling parallel to the walls of the container strike the mirrors at either end. These photons are reflected back into the medium while remaining parallel to the walls of the container. The mirror at one end of the container is partially mirrored. It reflects a proportion of the photons that hit it. It also allows a proportion of them out of the container as laser light. When stimulated emission is repeated within a tube, the photons produced are reflected back and forth through the medium. A chain reaction produces an intense parallel beam of light and the laser beam is produced. Further input of energy is now required from the energy source to reprime electrons that have assumed a lower energy orbit around their atom. The wavelength of a laser light is dependent on the nature of the lasing medium and the energy difference between the high energy and low energy orbits. The wavelength of the laser light determines the depth of tissue penetration. Far infrared and ultraviolet lasers are readily absorbed by water and therefore do not penetrate deep into tissues. Lasers in the visible spectrum are absorbed by hemoglobin and melanin and penetrate further. Red and near-infrared lasers have the deepest penetration. The wavelength of the laser light also determines the color of the laser. Output measurement of lasers For pulsed lasers, these are measured in joules. For continuous wave lasers, these are measured in watts. Energy of the laser radiation is given by the equation E equals H times V, where E is energy, H is Planck's constant, and V is photon frequency. Photon frequency is the only determinant of the energy of the laser beam. Properties of laser light Monochromatic, collimated, and coherent. Monochromatic means that each photon of laser light shares the same wavelength and therefore color. Collimated means 
the wave path of laser light photons are tightly packed and parallel to each other producing a non-divergent beam. Coherent means that each photon of laser light describes a wave that is exactly in phase with every other photon. Lasers striking a surface may be reflected, transmitted, scattered, or absorbed. Reflected laser beams may damage eyes. The depth of penetration of lasers is partially determined by the wavelength. Greater scattering of laser light occurs with lasers with shorter wavelengths. Absorbed laser light is converted to heat. Organic tissue contains various substances capable of absorbing light. These are termed chromophores and includes Hb, collagen and melanin. Each substance has a specific absorption spectrum, which is determined by its chemical structure. For example, oxyhemoglobin, which is targeted in vascular lesions, has absorption peaks at 418, 542, and 577 nanometers. Laser light at or close to these frequencies will be the most effective. Transmission of laser light may be via fiber optic bundles or via an articulated arm. Fiber optic bundles are used for visible and near infrared wavelength lasers. Articulated arm is used for wavelengths beyond visible and near infrared wavelength lasers. Classification of laser products The International Electrotechnical Commission 60825 classifies lasers according to their maximum output power and wavelength. Most medical lasers are class 3B and 4. Class 1 lasers are safe under normal usage conditions. For visible light, it emits beams less than 0.39 mW or beam of any power is inside device and is not accessible during operation, for example, CD player. Class 1M is safe under normal conditions except when passed through magnifying optics. Class 2 lasers, visible light beam only, 400 to 700 nanometers. Limited to power up to 1 mW, it is safe for unintentional exposure due to protection by the blink reflex time of 0.25 seconds. Do not stare into the beam. Class 2M, as for class 2 but are not safe when viewing with optical instruments. Class 3R is considered safe with careful handling and restricted viewing. Unintentional or accidental exposure to direct or reflected beam has a low risk. Class 3R is limited to power of 1 to 5 mW. Avoid direct exposure to the eyes. Class 3B has a power of up to 0.5 watts. It is hazardous to direct exposure to eye. Protective eyewear is required. Class 3B lasers can burn material if the beam is held long enough on the substance at close range. Class 4 lasers are extremely hazardous. Power is over 0.5 watts. It is hazardous with direct or scattered exposure to eyes or skin, it is capable of igniting flammable material. Examples of lasers used in surgery CO2 lasers uses wavelength of 10,600 nanometers. Color is far infrared. Tissue penetration is limited to no further than 200 micrometer. And so CO2 lasers are used for cutting superficial tissues. Tissue damage can be directly observed. CO2 laser energy is absorbed preferentially by water. Target cells are heated to the point of vaporization by the beam. Blood vessels are coagulated. CO2 lasers are used during aesthetic facial surgery to reduce wrinkling associated with aging and to vaporize vocal cord and airway lesions in ENT practice. Precautions should be taken to avoid eye and airway injury. Argon lasers Wavelength is 488 to 515 nanometers. Color is blue to green. Penetration. Argon laser light penetrates between 0.5 and 2 mm and is absorbed maximally by red tissues. It is used to treat diabetic retinopathy. Argon lasers are absorbed by hemoglobin but not by aqueous or vitreous humor. Argon lasers are also used to treat skin lesions such as port wine birthmarks. NDYAG lasers. The wavelength is 1064 nanometers. Color is near infrared. Penetration. It is transmitted through clear fluids and absorbed by dark matter. NDYAG lasers penetrate tissues deeply between 2 and 6 mm. These lasers are invisible to the human eye. 
Thus, they are guided by a low-power laser light. Low-power denatures protein molecules, high-power vaporizes tissues. MDYAG lasers are used for surgical removal and debulking of tumors such as airway neoplasms, in treating vascular malformations, and in ophthalmic surgery. Excimer lasers are cold ultraviolet lasers that do not heat tissues. They break chemical bonds in protein molecules and is used during refractive corneal surgery. Hazards due to lasers includes personal hazards and patient hazards. Healthcare workers can sustain eye injuries. The laser beam, even when reflected, may be focused by the lens of the eye onto the fovea and cause irreversible blindness. Physical distance offers no protection. Other parts of the eye may also be injured from lasers such as the retina, lens, aqueous humor, and vitreous humor. Although the penetration of CO2 lasers is shallow, it can still damage the cornea and lens. Laser plume inhalation can damage the respiratory system. Patient hazards includes accidental vessel or viscous perforation, bleeding, blood vessels more than 5 mm in diameter cannot be coagulated by lasers, venous gas embolism due to the coolant gas used at the laser tip, fires can occur due to ignition of drapes, alcoholic skin preparations, etc. Airway fires can occur during lasers to the airway, burns can occur. Precautions towards hazards due to lasers General precautions Appropriate information and training for staff Designation of a laser safety officer to supervise the correct use of equipment and to ensure safety measures are followed. This officer should be present at all times when a laser is in use. Warning signs should be displayed outside all theatre doors to indicate lasers are in use. All theatre doors should be locked from the inside when lasers are being used. Designated areas with restricted access and covered windows should be provided. Water should be used to extinguish small non-equipment fires. Specific precautions for patients. Patient eye protection. Close eyes with tapes and cover with moist swabs. Avoid plastic tape which is combustible. Protective matte metallic eye covers for patients when applicable such as when applying laser radiation near the patient's eyes. Avoid skin preparation fluids that are flammable whenever possible. Wait for flammable skin preparation fluids to dry before draping. Have all exposed skin areas covered with drapes made of absorbable material rather than plastic, which is potentially combustible. Tissue close to the site where the laser is applied can be protected with moistened pads or swabs. Equipment Wavelength specific goggles for eye protection should be used. These should have side shields to protect the lateral aspect of the eye. A light guide should be used to direct the laser beam to the surgical site if the laser used is outside the visible spectrum. Use protective clothing when appropriate. Smoke evacuation system should be used to extract laser plumes. Laser plumes contain fine particulates and aerosolized viruses which are potentially hazardous to healthcare workers. Special masks should be worn to protect against aerosolized viruses such as during surgery on papillomata. Equipment used in close proximity to lasers should be fire retardant. Medical instruments should have a matte rather than shiny finish to minimize the likelihood of reflection of lasers. Precautions during laser surgery to the airway. Airway maintenance can be either via a venturi system, via rigid bronchoscope or laryngoscopy, or via a laser-resistant endotracheal tube. A venturi system uses a high-pressure oxygen source and entrainment of atmospheric air. A sanders injector is placed in the lumen of a rigid laryngoscope or bronchoscope, which is open at both ends and permits entrainment of oxygen and rich air during inspiration and escape of CO2 and exhaust gases during expiration. There is a risk of high FiO2 which promotes ignition and fires, Inspired oxygen concentration is between 40 and 60% when jet venturi ventilation is employed. IV anesthesia is used to maintain depth of anesthesia. Muscle relaxants are used to prevent coughing and patient movement. Laser resistant endotracheal tubes. Normal PVC tracheal tubes ignite within a few seconds should it be exposed directly to a laser beam. 
Stainless steel foil has been used to protect endotracheal tubes. Specially designed laser resistant tracheal tubes are available. These typically have flexible metal bodies, either stainless steel or aluminum. Examples include Laser Track TM by Sheridan, Laser Shield TM by Zomet, and Laser Flex TM by Covidian. The cuffs and pilot balloons of ETTs should be filled with saline with or without methylene blue so that cuff puncture may be detected easily. Water in the cuff acts as a heat sink to reduce the risk of perforating or igniting the cuff with the laser. Protect these with damp pledgets. Some tube designs have double endotracheal tube cuffs so that if one is punctured, the second one is still functional. Use minimal FiO2 to maintain oxygenation at an SpO2 of 90-95% to and avoid nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide and oxygen support combustion. Air oxygen gas mixtures are safer than nitrous oxide oxygen mixture. Ideally, the FiO2 should be kept 25% and below. Rebreathing systems are preferred to avoid high FiO2 environment. Surgical swaps or packs must be kept moistened with saline to reduce the risk of ignition. Keep the tip of the endotracheal tube and fiber optic bronchoscope out of the line of fire of the laser. Airway fires. If this occurs, stop the surgical procedure, simultaneously turn off all gases, disconnect the breathing system, and remove the tracheal tube, inspect for damage, burns and patency, remove debris from the airway under direct vision, switch off the laser if it is the cause, call for help, extinguish the fire, flood the site of surgery with saline, and use soaked swabs. Ventilate the patient with back valve mask, use FiO2 21% initially, and use FiO2 100% once the fire has been extinguished completely. Secure the airway, direct laryngoscopy, bronchoscopy or rigid bronchoscopy, and reintubate the trachea. Use cold saline lavage. If airway damage is severe, consider IV steroids, arterial line and blood gases, chest x-ray, intensive care involvement, ENT opinion, early tracheostomy, and repeated bronchoscopy. These are my references. Thank you.